So I've been thinking a lot about educational technology. Um, I'm working on a book about games and education, and um, I have this Prezi today. If you don't know what a Prezi is, it's basically a PowerPoint that makes you sick. Um, it's going <laughs> to swoop and kind of, so I apologize if anybody gets seasick. So you know, I've been thinking a lot about this. As I said, um, remember this baby. Um, he's going to come back. Um, I want, and I want to give you as much perspective and sort of historical context as I can, so I'm going to start with a quiz. Um, let's fill in the blank here. Just give it, read it for a second and see if you can fill this in. Students today depend on blank too much. They don't know how to write blank. Probably everybody has their own uh, take on this. Somebody want to yell one out? Go ahead. Okay, well, good. Even, even better. Students today, today depend on paper too much. They don't know how to write on a slate without getting chalk dust all over themselves. They can't clean a slate properly. What will they do when they run out of paper? Okay, so we've, we've, been, we've been like fretting about technology for a long time here. Um, I, I, I've always thought that, <clears throat> to me, the thing about education and technology, there are two questions that I think are central to it. So, Number one is what kind of place should school be and what should students do there? <clears throat> so when you think about ed tech, you think about this sort of thing, right? You picture the happy kids with their new iPads. And um, I want you to kind of stop thinking about that for just a few minutes. So when you think about technology, I want you to think about this as technology. And when you think about this, I want you to also think about this. Because these are two technologies that we've been using for a long time. Um, and by now you're like, wait, hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this strange man? So it will make sense in just a few minutes. Okay, so we start with the definition, um, technology. We're gonna go way back here, right? making usage and knowledge of tools, machines, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It can also refer to the collection of such tools, machinery, and procedures. It's a TED Talk, so you need definitions. <clears throat> Technology significantly affect human as well as other animal species ability to control and yada, yada. Okay, this is really, wait a second. Did he say other, other animal species? And actually, if you missed it, I did. Um, so technology, you know, we think, oh, we invented technology, but it is like, it is older than we are, okay? It's been around longer than we've been around. And how do we know this? Because we know that chimps use sticks to get termites. And of course, you know, I don't, I don't have to explain any of this to you guys. Birds are incredible technologists. And of course, dogs are very good at using machines. <laughs> um, right, these are the first farmers. These, these ants don't actually eat the leaves, they bring them down into the, uh, to their colony and grow fungus on them, eat the fungus. So they're farmers. Um, and these guys are ranchers. These, these ants actually raise these aphids and milk them, okay? So we, we didn't think of this uh, ourselves. So the, the kind of the big ideas in technology, things like farming, livestock, Cities, shipbuilding, and of course, canned tuna. Okay, these are all what Kevin Kelly, one of my favorite writers about technology, said a fabulous, these are a fabulous exoskeleton that turned man into Superman. Okay, so these are, um, this, I want you to think about the ways in which, you know, what we're gonna talk about here is just a, kind of a little piece of something, I think much bigger than we might imagine. Okay. Technology changes everything, even our language. And if you, if you had seen this sign maybe 10 years ago, you'd have said, oh my God, someone's drowning, save them. What do you say now? If you see someone drowning, laugh out loud, right? Does everybody see that? Yeah, okay. And that's because of, you know, texting, right? 
Um, it changes how we relate to one another. How many of you would agree with this? Yeah, would you agree with this? Well, actually, it's interesting because this person said this in 1929. Okay, that in the 90s, that is the 1890s, we were all much more together. And these, this was somebody complaining about cars and modern technology back then. And of course, the biggest technology of all, telephones, okay? I want to, I want a very quick aside about telephones. This is something that I have noticed that is really fascinating to me. I have never gotten to the bottom of this. So I have two teenagers, two teenage girls. This generation of theirs is the first generation ever to have universal phone ownership, right? Everybody's got a phone? They hate to talk on the phone. The phone rings in my house. Nobody answers it, <laughs> right? Like when I was a kid, right? When you were kids, the phone would ring. Everybody would like run to get the phone. Now, now it's like, you know, I'll let it ring. It's not important. Um, if anybody has any ideas on that, please let me know. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to get to the actual substance of this talk. So um, I'm going to try to make the case that guys like this, going way back, really gave us what we call the modern public school system. Okay, and I'm going to do this. By the way, there are a lot of ed tech people here, and I know you, you just please one heckle each. Okay, <laughs> don't. Just keep it to one. So in 1790, 95% of Americans lived in rural areas. And then around 1790, 1800, something really big happened. Something changed. We got all these kind of things one after another. We got things like steam engines and the cotton gin, all the stuff you learned about in school, right? And the locomotive and food preservation and the telegraph. None of this I have to explain to you. Computers, this is the, sort of one of the first actual computers, and this, my favorite picture of all, of course, this is sort of modern farm machinery. And you can imagine being the guy selling this thing, you know, here, Farmer Brown, just sit right there. <laughs> sit right in that, <laughs> everything will be fine. <laughs> okay, and we got the uh, sewing machine, of course. And where, what did it get us? It gave us, as far as I'm concerned, it gave us the American teenager. And that's my yearbook picture. Um, <laughs> This is, this is why, why it gave us that. So, and this is from a, a book, really interesting um, book called The Rise and Fall of the American Teenager. So the American Teenager, as we know, was a product of adult uncertainty about the, what the world would become. A son who followed in his father's footsteps was on the road to nowhere. Does this sound familiar? Like 21st century skills, right? Everything's changing. These guys would have called this 19th century skills, okay? So what did we do? In the middle of all this, we created the modern high school, okay? We thought, you know, our kids, the jobs that they have in 20, 30, 40 years are not gonna be the same ones as we have, so we need to do something different. We need to give them a sort of big, broad education, okay? A few years, about 100 years later, urban Americans outnumbered rural Americans, and then 10 years after that, half, for the first time, half the kids in the US were in high school, okay? Um, and we needed a way to teach all these kids, so we invented educational technology. Um, Larry Cuban, kind of a really uh, essential educational technology thinker, said, educational technology is any device available to teachers for use in instructing students in a more efficient and stimulating manner and the sole use of the teacher's voice. And I thought, this is educational technology, isn't it? Right? Um, but actually, we, we, we we quickly, very quickly got, right in the middle of this, actually got the chalkboard. And we're gonna talk a little bit about chalk, okay? Just for a few minutes. Because um, I kind of find it interesting to think about it as technology, okay? Um, and it worked, and it still works for a reason. You know, it's part of the existing wall. You don't have to remodel. It's inexpensive, obtrusive. Everybody's got access to it, right? You don't need training to get access to it. Um, you can put kids in front of the class, okay? And that puts the burden of order on their shoulders. And also, if, you, if you're a student of, of Dewey, you realize that this is probably the most important thing of all, that the message you're sending to kids is, well, if somebody asked me to stand in front of the class and do something, somebody cares what I think. 
Um, active public display, kids can see a process unfolding before their eyes, and it's got hardware and software, right? Okay. Same thing with the textbook, right? Textbook, think about it as technology, okay? Hardware and software, right? Um, it's comprehensive, familiar, cheap, easy, portable, etc. cetera. <clears throat> oh, not working, yes. Okay, another quiz. Blank will be the ruin of education in our country. Students use these devices, then throw them away. This is probably a little easier. Ballpoint pens. <laughs> and this is what I love about this quote. The American values of thrift and frugality are being discarded. Businesses and banks will never allow such expensive luxuries. <laughs> I'm thinking like, this is what banks give away now, right? They give away ballpoint pens. So I'm gonna talk very quickly about three technologies that we've had sort of interesting American love affair with. Um, first is the movies. So Thomas Edison, just about 100 years ago, said this. Books will soon be obsolete in the schools. Scholars will be soon instructed through the eye. It is possible to teach every branch of human knowledge with the motion picture. Our school system will be completely changed in 10 years. He gave us 10 years, okay? He, this is, I love this, he envisioned that kids would go so crazy over movies in school that you'd have to have armed guards keeping kids out. <laughs> and of course that didn't happen, why? Because he didn't think about one important thing. If you're a teacher, you know this, you don't wanna turn the lights out in your classroom, right? <laughs> um, teachers love control, right? And it's not, I'm not knocking teachers, I was a former teacher. As a teacher, you want control of the classroom and turning out the lights and turning on a movie is the best way to lose control, okay? Um, 1923 in New York City, does anybody know what experiment we start then? Radio, the radio in the classroom, okay? This was a very big deal back then. The roof of the classroom has been, I can't remember who said this, but blown off and the walls have been set on the circumference of the globe. Isn't that great? So we got things like, we got things called schools of the air. These were actual um, programs that you could tune in and listen to in school. Um, and they were incredibly popular in the 40s. Um, by the late 40s, nearly one third of kids in Wisconsin, Wisconsin was, had sort of the most robust one. Um, you're get, getting quite a bit of your schooling from the radio. Um, and then of course, in the 40s, 50s, 60s, we got TV. It first started in Philadelphia. Here's another you know, great proclamation. When the eye and the ear have been remarried in television, then we shall indeed be challenged to open wide the school door. Okay, right across the river in Hagerstown was the, kind of the most well-documented, biggest experiment in this, okay? The um, Ford Foundation, funded a very big project, and I'm just gonna take you through this very quickly because I'm running out of time. Some kids would spend a third of their day watching TV in classes of 100 kids. They had their own uh, TV guide. Um, and they gave us something called Ron in Space, which I don't even wanna know what it is. <laughs> um, so, and then we got to the computer, okay? And as the years went by, this was, the, this is what a desktop computer looked like in 1960. Uh, 1970, it's looking a little better. Ooh, 81, that's looking good. Um, 84, even better. Okay, so by, by the mid 80s, we're talking about something called the children's machine, right? Computers are the children's machine. Seymour Papert, MIT, he said things like, and this will sound very familiar to you, I believe the computer presence will enable us to so modify the learning environment, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, this will change everything. Have we heard this before? Um, we started buying computers like mad, and the results, of course, were incredible. Wait, what? <laughs> okay. But the one thing he, one thing Papert said, which I think was really important, and this is kind of, if you take anything away from this talk, this is it. So he, he envisioned computers changing schools in this way. Schools should be, he said, like Rio before Carnival, okay, where everybody, comes, pitches in, makes stuff, does stuff. The whole community is part of this, right? And, and I guess this is a really appealing idea to me because like, 
if this had been my third grade teacher, I think, <laughs> like, like things would have been different for me, you know? Um, so I hope that you guys consider some different ways to think about technology and make your school more like Rio de Janeiro before <laughs> Carnival. Thank you.